Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're going to be covering some simple beginner steps that anyone can do uh, no matter your experience level with just a little bit of time and a little bit of effort. This video is going to be based off of the one point technique as demonstrated in step one of Hobby Japan's 10 modeling techniques for all Gunpla builders. If you'd like to see my full review of this MOOC, click in the little eye above there. And as with all the steps in this wonderful little MOOC, we're going to be using the entry grade ARC 78 2 Gundam, of which there's two versions. So just to let you guys know, there's the box version, which retails for 700 yen, and the light version, which retails for a little bit less for 500 yen, but the light version does not include the beam rifle in the shield. So we're not gonna be using that one today, we're going to be using the box version because part of today's tutorial is gonna be covering coloring the camera on the rifle. The entry grade is a fantastic kit because it boasts some very impressive articulation and color separation for the price of just 500 or 700 yen for this. So it's a very cheap but wonderful model to work on and plus it's the iconic Gundam so it's a perfect place to start for beginners. So before we get started, two important things to remember for modelers of all skills and experience levels, even the most basic beginner techniques uh, can be used and are still often frequently used by even than the most experienced and professional modelers. And no matter how much experience you have, however many years you've been modeling, you can still always find new things to learn. You might find new, simpler ways to do some things you're already doing, or might find different ways to do some simple things that you were maybe doing in a different way. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the products that we're going to be using today. So it may look like a lot, and as we're going through the steps, you might find some of these not particularly useful for your own personal needs. That's totally okay, but we've got some top coat here, spray can type, gloss coat, Coat and also some matte coat. You got some Q-tips, some toothpicks, some sanding sponges. You can also use sanding paper. Uh, we've got just a small paint tray, some masking tape, a paintbrush. It doesn't really matter about the paintbrush. Also, just some something simple, cheap can work just as well for this step. Got a hobby knife, some nippers, and then an assortment of different Gundam markers, which we'll use at different points, and then also some panel line type Gundam markers as well. And so for this kit, you'll notice it's molded in five different colors, so it's almost entirely color accurate straight out of the box, it's only some small little color apps that we'll have to fix with some Gundam markers. You'll also notice that this kit is molded in a particular way, similar to a lot of SD Gundam kits where the gates is the type of gate that's meant to be broken away very easily without the use of nippers, but for our purposes today we are going to be using nippers to ensure that we get a cleaner finish. So with your nippers you're going to want to cut slightly away from the part, leaving a little bit left over. So what is left over can then simply be removed safely with a knife. And if it's still not quite close enough, you can use a sanding paper or a sanding sponge or sanding paper to sand that a little bit further. And another important thing to look out for as you're building is mold lines. As you can see here right on the back of the hand, there's that nasty one. So you're going to want to watch out for these and sand appropriately. And again, these can be sanded away pretty easily and will give you a much nicer finish. And if you're worried about the part then being slightly miscolored and a little bit scuffed up from the sanding process, you can then switch to a higher grit sanding paper, in this case going from 800 to 10,000. But alternatively, you could also just simply use a piece of A4 paper or even just a cloth or your t-shirt or whatever. Now for this particular part containing the head camera here, we're going to paint this using a metallic red. And so I'll be using the metallic red Gundam marker here from the Gundam metallic marker set. And now here's where your paint tray is going to come in handy because we don't want to apply the paint directly from the marker onto the part because that doesn't give us as much control. So what we're going to do is let out some paint into the paint tray and then use our paintbrush to paint it onto the part. That gives us much more control of applying the paint onto the piece. And of course, before we do that, don't forget to shake the marker thoroughly. Now unfortunately for our camera on the back of the head, there is no separate piece for this and a lot of kits would include a sticker, but in this case we don't have any stickers included so we can make our own using the masking tape and the Gundam marker. Now for this, you could either cut the tape to the correct size and then paint that first, or what I'm going to do is just paint on the tape and that way I have some extra in case I cut it to the wrong size, I can cut some more. And on this case, I'm just going to directly color on the tape and then later, we'll, once that's dry, we'll cut out a piece for our back head camera. Next for the eye pieces, we're going to lightly sand these and then later we'll spray this with a little bit of gloss top coat and that will make them have a nice more shinier glowing look to them. 
Next up, we're gonna start detailing the head here, starting with the tiny little Vulcans at the top of the head, in which case we're going to be using the gray marker here from this Gundam Seed Gundam marker set. And for the rest of the details around on the head, we'll use a Gundam Marker panel line type gray in this case, because on white color plastic, gray gives a nice uh, subtle effect, not quite as drastic in its contrast as using black. It's okay if your panel lining is a bit messy, and especially in these detail areas where it's just a thick line that's too thick. How we're going to clean that up is just very simply just with a Q-tip here. You can rub that on there. For this stage, because the plastic is unpainted as well too, you don't really need much other than just the Q-tip itself to wipe on that, and that should clean up the panel lining pretty nicely here. Then as for any excess paint that you may have, where you may have missed that painting in the Vulcans, you can clean that up pretty simply with just your knife. Just be very careful and just lightly use your knife on the surface of that just to clean up any excess paint. Next up on our V-fin part, you'll notice there's these little safety flags on the end to keep those from being too pointy, but we're going to remove those basically the same way that you would a normal nub or a gate mark. You're going to cut it first away with your nippers, leaving a little bit left over, and then you're going to clean that up further with the knife. It's important to make sure your knife is good and sharp and then also just, just of course be delicate with this part because it's a very fragile little piece. Once you get it down to just a tiny bit left, I would recommend then switching up to some sanding paper or sanding stick. And you should be able to see the difference how much nicer that looks once that's cleaned up. You can even sharpen that up to a much sharper point if you want. For now, the last thing we need to do at the moment on the head is just go over and spray some gloss coat on our eyes and head camera pieces. For the next step, we're going to head down to the knees where we've got this little vent here on the front of the knees that we're going to paint in once again using the gray Gundam marker and a brush. And the same thing goes for this later. If you get a little bit of paint where you're not supposed to, you can clean it up pretty easily with a knife later on once the paint dries a little bit. Now painting a yellow detail like this camera here for the beam rifle, in this case we're going to be using just a yellow Gundam marker, is going to be much more difficult because anytime you're painting a color like yellow or white on top of a gray piece, you're going to find it very difficult. So it's going to take a number of coats to get the color looking right, and even then, uh, the problem is the number of coats is going to make your paint build up thicker and thicker, and so you have to reach a nice balance of getting a good solid color without making the paint caked on too thick, so it just takes a little bit of practice. As you can see, after applying a little bit of paint on there, it's still not really looking all that great. So what I'm gonna do is set this aside and let that dry a little bit before we go ahead and apply another coat, and we can start working on some other panel lining around on the kit. In which case, we're going to be switching back to the gray panel line Gundam marker for filling in some of these details like these on the knees, the ankles, and on the elbows of the Gundam. This kit is mostly white, but for what little panel lining there is to be done on our other colors, we're going to switch up to the Real Touch marker set here. So for your yellow pieces, you can use an orange, and for your red pieces, you can use this dark red color, and then for the blue pieces, you can use this blue color here. And as personally for yellow and red colors, I could also recommend just using a, a brown type uh, panel line marker. But the reason we use a color close to the original color of the part is that we're not so much creating a line, but we're creating a shade. So by using a similar color, it's the best way to do that.
Now another really easy modification that you can do to improve the look of this kit is to separate the front skirts. So the front skirts here are molded together but they're made in a way that you can cut them down the middle for individual separate articulation. Now a couple things to keep in mind. A lot of HG kits have this feature that the front skirts are made that you can separate them but not all of them so check to make sure before you go ahead and cut those apart. And also if you're using single bladed nippers like this which can be quite thin, cutting something so thick sometimes can be dangerous and could break your blade so be careful when cutting these if you have a larger pair of nippers or for example an older pair or something like that maybe use those just to be safe but I feel confident in these and they work just fine and now our front skirt armor will be able to move separately which will look more natural when you're doing different action poses with the kit we can also then take a break and work on our joint parts which are all going to be in gray and so the panel lining is going to be all done in black on these and just remember that joint parts are also a very common area to find mold lines, so again, you'll want to sand those before you proceed. Aside from the previously mentioned methods, tissue paper also is a great way to finish off the pieces that you've sanded to get them looking smooth again. And for getting dust out of little details, just use an old toothbrush, and that usually works very well. And so as we're going through, getting ready to spray some top coat on some of those joint parts, just cleaning up some of the other panel lining around on the kit. And um, uh, finally, if you're finding that the just cotton swab or Q-tip on its own is not really enough to clean it up, another thing that you can just use really simply is just any sort of just rubber eraser. So just running this along some of your drawn on panel lines as best you can, or a smaller size would work if you can get a smaller one to fit into kind of tighter spaces, but this works really well to just clean up these uh, panel lines just right here on the bare plastic as well too. It's not going to damage anything and it should uh, clean up that line really nicely for you. It's obviously not going to be a huge difference, but here you can see with this one, that's just with the pen, not cleaned up at all, and then this cleaned up one is just a nice sharper, a little crisper line there. And a couple of other things to look out for just before you get down to spraying your top coat on this is that you can touch up some of these other colors. Like for example, the paint that we applied here on the knee, make sure you double check that if you need to do any touch up on that. In this case, I think I managed to do it pretty well. But for parts like this where you have that little bit of white mark left over from where you remove the nub, you can touch that up with a little bit of the red paint marker, just a little tiny bit on there. As long as you have a color that's the same or pretty close, just a little bit on there and obviously that doesn't match. You can just kind of wipe that away a little bit and you can see that's going to be toned down a lot. And I can just hit that maybe one or two times more just until that's basically almost invisible. And you can do the same thing on this blue piece here. For example, this piece will actually be covered up by the backpack so it doesn't matter at all. But you can just hit that with a little bit of blue, wipe that away a little bit, get a little bit more blue on there, wipe that away a little bit, and that uh, white mark will start to disappear. And remember these two pieces that we gloss coated? Well, before we spray our matte top coat, we're going to not want to spray matte where we wanted those to be glossy. So for that camera bit, for the eyes, we just simply don't spray this part at all. And for our head camera here, you're just going to want to cover that up with a little piece of masking tape for when we're spraying our matte top coat. And last but not least, recommended method for cleaning up your panel lining is also using the pore type gunner markers. Here there is an eraser marker, which can certainly come in handy. The one thing you can do is let out some of this into your little paint cup and it's clear, so it's gonna be kind of hard to see. And then you can use your cotton swab and just get some of that on there. And this will help to clean up some of your panel lining for some of those more hard to reach places. This will probably be more useful than trying to use an eraser. I think one thing that you guys could also do is actually use your brush for this as well too. You can see that works really well for getting into these really hard to reach places. And what it's actually is doing is not like uh, cleaning away your uh, like color, but it's more so kind of just moving it around actually. So you can direct where you, direct it where you want it to go with the brush actually. So you can sort of paint the color back into the panel line or detail or whatever. So we're ready to go spray our top coats. Now you guys saw me using these before, but these are just regular alligator clips. If you guys are unfamiliar, you can of course buy them or just make them on your own. It's just bamboo skewers and then just some alligator clips on the end. So it's easy enough stuff to find at your DIY shop or hardware store or something like that.
And here we go, guys. I would recommend waiting uh, about two hours at least. Uh, you know, give it more if you have the time, uh, just to let that top coat dry good and well. And now we can start with just the final assembly. And we can't forget to cut our little sticker here for the back of the head as well. So there you have it guys, that was a lot of fun. A really simple techniques to just make your Gumpa look so much better than how it looks straight out the box. I hope this was helpful for a lot of you guys. If you learned something, you know, let me know down in the comments below if the video was helpful for you. It's pretty plain to see this kit looks so much nicer than it would have straight out of the box and it really didn't take a lot of effort, obviously, and not a whole lot of time either. So whether it's your first kit or your 10th kit, I think these are just the simple things that you can do even if you're not interested in fully painting your Gunpla, just doing a little bit of painting and a little bit of uh, just a couple techniques here and there to really improve the look of it. I think that, you know, there's some huge improvements to be made. Now again, for this video, I basically stuck to the one point technique as detailed in the book. That said, I think if you've got all the gun markers that you're going to be using only a little bit of on this on this kit, you might as well use them some more. So I think there's a few more details on this kit, especially like on the backpack or on the gun or some places where you could have de detailed them even more with a little bit of uh, just silver marker or something like that, or even for the eyes, I maybe would have painted those uh, with gold. Because you do have a gold marker in the Gundam Marker Advanced set, which, which we actually didn't end up using for this kit. But I'll just say, as someone personally who never uses Gundam Markers and doesn't like to use Gundam Markers, using them for this kit, I did find them quite handy. So I think I will kind of reconsider just how useful I do find Gundam Markers in general. I think they can be certainly useful. And just as a heads up, I do plan on working on a sequel video to this one where we'll be going over the second part of the book, which covers a little bit more advanced techniques than that. So we'll be going over that in the near future with you guys. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, of course, to US the Gundam Store, of course, for making it all possible as well, too. If you guys want to check out the kit, some of the tools, the Gundam markers, and all the stuff that I use in this video, you can find a lot of that stuff there at US the Gundam Store. The link and the coupon code for you guys to use will be down in the video description, as always. So check that out and just kind of look around the store. There's lots of cool stuff to find. These basic techniques can be really applied to anything, whether you're building an entry grade, high grade, master grade, perfect grade, whatever the case may be, you can use these techniques to improve the look of pretty much any Gumpla. So again, thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, like the video, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. That's greatly appreciated. And let me know if you guys are looking forward to the second part or more videos like this. Of course, I always want to make some more videos like this. It's a lot of fun. So let me know you guys' support and I'll definitely be working on those in the near future. Till next time, guys. Thanks again and have a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.